Today, I want to talk about pointers, specifically pointers that don't have type information, are also known as void pointers. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Today's video is for the beginners, for fairly beginner programmers out there who think that you've finally wrapped your head around pointers, but then you see something like this and you're not really sure what to make of it. Because this causes a serious moment of pause for a lot of beginners. So I thought today we would talk about it, talk about what a void pointer is, why you might want to use one, and we'll also talk about some examples where you may have already used a void pointer and you just didn't realize it. Also at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about a subtle difference between C and C++. It might save you some time. But first, a big thank you to all of you who support this channel through Patreon, buying merch, and online classes. Also, for those of you that are curious about where you can get example code from my videos, you can get that through Patreon, and you can get access to my monthly office hour. So now, back to void pointers. If you look long enough into the void, the void begins to look back through you. I don't know if Nietzsche was talking about new programmers, but sometimes the concept of void takes a second to get a grip on. Now, the first time you see void is probably when you are looking at a void function, maybe something like this. You know, we make a quick function and Let's just say it's a simple function that prints out the word hello with a new line character. Nothing complicated about that. So in this case, the void simply says that this function does not have a result type. It doesn't produce a result. It doesn't give us a value when it's done. So if I come down here in main, I can definitely call say hello. And this is going to work just fine. Now, let's make sure just by coming down here and compiling with my make file, I am using a make file. You can check it out here. Nothing complicated, just a really basic make file. If you haven't seen make, be sure to check it out on my other videos that deal with make. And actually, hold up really quick. I just noticed I was editing my uh, C++ example. Let's do this over in C and compile that one. We'll come back to C++ later. But if I run example here, then you will see that it works just fine. It prints out hello, so no worries. But note that I can't do something like this. I can't say result equals say hello like this. If I try to do this, I'm going to get an error because it says, hey, look, you're trying to assign to an integer a value void. It doesn't have any type information. It's not a variable. Simply, the compiler just doesn't know how to take nothing, no variable, no result, and produce an int out of it. So it gives us an error. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's straightforward enough. And I'll leave this up here. But so what if what about if I come down here and say something like void star p? We understand what it means for a function to be void, meaning it doesn't return anything, but what does it mean to have a variable p, which is a pointer that points to void, which maybe up till now we've thought of as nothing. So is this a pointer to nothing? Okay, so calm down, calm down. You see, at least in this case, it's probably more helpful to think of void as meaning no type rather than nothing. So we can think of this as a pointer, but we have no type information that is attached to that pointer. So the compiler is storing an address for us in memory, but it's not making any assumptions about what is stored at that location in memory. But really what I wanna emphasize is that it is still a pointer, just like any other pointer, it stores an address. And just to make this clear, what I wanna do is to come down here and we'll just add a little bit to our program First thing I'm going to add an int pointer, call this p2, or let's call this ip. This might be the kind of pointer that you maybe were introduced to. And let's come down here and add a couple printf statements. We're going to say the size of a void pointer equals, we'll do zu because we're using memory sizes. Good habit to get into. And we'll do size of void pointer. And then let's do the same thing with our int pointer. So we'll do p right here, ip right here, and change this to be an int pointer. Okay, so now we can compile it, we can come down here and run it, and you can see that both of these are the same size. At least on my machine, we're looking at eight bytes per pointer because they're both simply storing an address, and on my machine, an address is eight bytes. And since these pointers are basically the same, we can do something like I could say p equals ip. Right, I can just assign one address value to another. And just to see this in action, let's come up here and we're gonna make, let's make an integer, we'll call it x and assign it to a value. Let's say it's speed beef. And then I'm gonna come down here and take my int pointer and assign it to the address of 
x. Now note that I could have just done the same thing with p. I could say p equals the address of x. That's going to work just fine too, but let's not do that for right now. We'll come to that later. My point right now is that we have a value here and we should have an ad actual address being assigned to ip and then when we assign p to be ip, we should end up with the same addresses. So just to verify that, let's come down here and get ourselves a another printf statement. It's going to be p points to percent %p. If you haven't seen the percent %p format specifier, this is simply there for printing out addresses, which is exactly what I want to do right now, is I want to print out the address of p and the address of ip. And now if we come down once again, we compile it. And if we run it, you can see that we get the same address for both pointers. So I hope at this point it's making it clear that they're both pointers, they're both storing an address. In this case, they're storing the exact same address address. So what's the difference? Well, for one, one difference is because we have type information around it, I can come in here and I can say IP, you know, star IP, I can dereference it and say this equals something else. Like let's say coffee. Okay, so this is going to store the integer coffee at the address that IP points to. But I'm going to run into trouble if I try to do the same thing. Like, so let's say I do star P equals and I give it its own value. To, if I can type beef. Now this is gonna give me a little bit of trouble. If I come down here and try to compile it, it's going to say, hey, wait a minute, void is not assignable. You can't assign something to void. You have no type information here. So the first thing you need to know about void pointers, I guess, is that you can't dereference them, or at least you shouldn't dereference them in general because you can't do much with void. But of course, this is only a minor inconvenience because as I mentioned in some previous videos, C is not a type safe language. So we can just add a cast in here. And what I'm saying here with this cast is I'm saying, I want you to treat P as though it were an int pointer and then dereference it. And now with this added cast, this line is now going to work just fine. So again, once more, let's just double check. Let's make sure that this is actually working and we'll print out our contents. We will add a percent %x specifier because I'm going to print out in hexadecimal and we'll come down here and do star p and star star ip. Once again, I am going to need the cast because otherwise it would complain to me saying it doesn't know what to do with this void pointer. And now we can come down and compile it. And if we run it, you can see that both of these memory addresses are pointing, both of these addresses are pointing to the memory containing dead beef. Now let's pause here really quickly to make sure this all makes sense. Some of you may be wondering about what happened to coffee that I wrote up here in the location pointed to by IP. And I did this on purpose because I wanted you to remember that these two pointers are at this time pointing to the same location in memory. So the last write to the memory pointed to by P, that overwrote the previous values in that memory, and both pointers are pointing to the same thing. So they only are showing the last thing that was written. So just to illustrate this, just to try to tease this apart, let's now make them separate. So instead of assigning P to be IP right here, I'm going to take this out. And let's come up here and make another int, int y, and I'm going to assign p to be the address of y. So now with just that subtle change, that very small change, I can come down here and I can run it. And now you can see that we have different addresses and different values because the two pointers are now pointing to two different locations. Okay, so that's cool, but why would we ever want to use a pointer with no type information? It just seems like it makes more work because you have to keep casting things and it's just limiting, right? And the answer is that basically anytime you want to store generic memory addresses, basically when you want to store an address, but you don't really care what type it points to. So one example that you're going to see a lot is when you use a memory allocator. So let's say instead of assigning P up here to the address of Y, let's say we come in here and say malloc size of int. So this is just saying, hey, I want you to dynamically allocate on the heap a block of memory that is integer sized. And then we're going to assign it to P. And then of course we should come down here at the end and free P once we're done with it. And of course this would work with our int pointer as well, but let's just take a look before we get to all that. Let's just look at the man page for malloc. Sorry. And malloc. So this is showing us the malloc and free man page. We can see, and of course, calloc, realloc, and realloc array. But if you look closely here, notice what malloc returns. When you ask for memory, what you're doing is you're saying, hey, I want a certain size block of memory. Malloc doesn't really care what you're going to put in that memory. It just cares what size it is. And it knows that you're not really going to care. You just want the pointer back. Malloc is trying to be generic. So malloc returns you a void pointer. 
And of course, up here in our program, we could use malloc with a non-void pointer, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But, but first, before we finish with the man page, if you look at free, similarly, when free, when we're done with the memory and we're just trying to like give it up and let somebody else use it, notice what we pass in. We pass in a void pointer again, because again, free doesn't really care what types you put in that block. It just wants to reclaim the block. So just give me the address. I don't care what's actually stored there. Another quick example, just while we're looking at examples, is memcopy, which we looked at in a recent video. That one involved an angry squirrel, just in case you haven't checked it out. But notice again here that memcopy is using void pointers. And the reason is it doesn't care what you stored there. It's just, just give me an address. I'm going to copy the memory. I don't really care what it is. I'm just going to copy bytes. So again, the point here is anytime that you're trying to work with an address, a block of memory, you want to store a pointer, but you don't care what it actually points to, then a void pointer is a really good option. This will allow you to, for example, if I wanted an array of pointers and I wanted to have them each pointing to different things, I could do that with void pointers. So, but now let's just tweak this a little bit. Let's get out of here and let's come in here and tweak things to make it work a little more how we usually do things in our programs. Because usually in a program, if I knew that I wanted to have an int here, I wouldn't have a void pointer assigned to the result from malloc. Instead, what I would do, and let's just let's just swap these two. So we'll have p be assigned to the address of x, and we'll come down here and we will have the integer pointer now pointing to the or assigned to the result from malloc. And I should come down here and free ip. Okay, so now at this point, I do have an unused variable We'll get rid of Y really quick. And if we come down now, our example works just like it did before. It doesn't really matter. We we did change up the addresses. So now IP is on the heap rather than P is on the heap. But otherwise, basically, we got the same thing. But the reason I bring this up is that this highlights a difference between C and C++ that I just want to point out. So let's quickly just take this over to C++. And now if we compile it, you notice that we have a problem. You see, when C saw me assign a void pointer coming from malloc to an int pointer, it was like, cool. People do that all the time. That's what people do with malloc. But when C++ saw it, it was like, hey, those aren't the same kind of pointer. Do you think they're aware of that? You see, C++ is a bit more of a worrier. So in C++, we would have to come up here and add a cast to an integer pointer. And now if we come down here, it's going to compile just fine. And in case you're wondering, it will run just the same. And I just want to make it clear here that I'm not saying that one of these approaches, the C approach or the C++ approach is better than the other. I do wish they would agree on one common way and do the same thing because it would mean a little bit less for us to keep track of in our heads. But I really think this is just a reflection of the two languages, individual personalities. C over here is going to allow you to write slightly more concise code, while C++ over here is going to force you to acknowledge when you assign a pointer of one type to a pointer of another type. And that's not a bad thing because that's actually the cause. That's the source of a lot of weird bugs. The main thing is to be aware of it. And if you're writing code that needs to be portable to both C and C++, then just include the cast right here. That will create more portable code because C doesn't mind. C's happy with that cast, but C++ requires it. So thanks for looking into the void with me today. I hope you learned something new. Please like, subscribe, go on a clicking spree. Just click on everything just to let the YouTube algorithm know that there's something interesting going on here. And until next week, I'll see you later.